Guys, today we are going to Syria. What's up, Clats? What's going on? Can we get 500,000 likes for going to Syria and meeting ISIS? <laughs> Make sure you turn on that notification button so you get notifications. Don't forget, because this is a big channel. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Imagine if I actually spoke like that. Imagine if that, I was that type of YouTuber. Anyhow, today we are heading off to a very contested area here in the world called the Golan Heights. We're here in northern Israel in a little kibbutz called Malkia, almost near the border of Lebanon. Actually, the border of Lebanon is right there to my left. Amazing place, beautiful up in the mountains. But this is not our goal for the day. Today, we are heading off to go see Syria. If you didn't know, Israel and Syria actually share geographical borders, and that's where we're heading off to today to go see that. It's been a wild ride up here in the north, so make sure if you haven't seen any of the other videos we've uh, we've made up here in the north of Israel, make sure you check it out. It's been a really fun trip, and then later today we're gonna do some even more crazy stuff up here. But this is really an area I've wanted to bring you guys to for the longest time. I've been here a bunch of times, but. I've never had a chance to sit down and make a video and talk about it and I think it's a really important place to, to, to show you guys and to talk about because there's a lot of history there, there's a lot of things currently going on uh, in the current political world there. So we're going to go explore that, I'm really excited for it. First thing very important, because we're going to an area that's kind of in the middle of nowhere, got to fill up some gas. All right. First stop, Mount Bental. Got about a 40 minute drive. So this car doesn't have Bluetooth, so I have to, have to hook up my Bluetooth speaker. And I'm just jamming out some, some tunes. I'm really excited for this day, it's gonna be cool. Heck. Here we go. Guys, this is insane. Look how steep this is. Jeez. <laughs> As most of you know, I come from Miami, so this is not something I'm used to driving up. Other than when I drove across the United States and did like the Grand Canyon drive, I don't really get heights like this. But oh my goodness, look at that. Look at those mountains. Yep. There's a cloud moving right there. Anyhow, I've parked the car and I'm going to the tippy top of the mountain to show you guys the amazing view. Oh, I caught that on camera. So let's talk about the Golan Heights for a second. What you just heard was actually either a missile or a gun or a bomb going off. The Golan Heights is geographically situated east of the Galilee, uh, which is another area in Israel where we were earlier today and yesterday. Whoa. That was another one. <laughs> This mountain, Mount Bental, you can stand on top of, you can actually look over and see Syria. Every single time, including just right now, that I've stood up here, I've heard gunfire, I've heard bombs. It's a really interesting place. The entire formation of the mountains here in the Golan Heights are made of volcanic activity and volcanic rocks. As well, here in the entrance, the promenade leading from the parking lot to the top of the lookout is filled with these really cool metal art sculptures that you can actually look at and observe, and there's a bunch of different types. So this is really amazing. We have made it to the lookout here. This entire area here on the top of Mount Bental, the entire kind of nature reserve is made of old bunkers that uh, were created during the Six Day War when Syria attacked Israel. This was held as a position to defend Israel um, and, and later recaptured from Syria and created 
uh, part of Israeli territory. Behind me is literally Syria. The entire country of Syria is behind me. So what I'm currently walking through are the old bunkers. Golan Heights is a very contested area in the international community. Israel captured this area during the Six Day War as it captured a bunch of different areas of different countries and then returned them for peace. During the Six Day War, if you didn't know, a bunch of countries in the surrounding area declared war on Israel all at once, trying to destroy the country and uh, wipe out the Jewish people. Didn't work out and Israel won in a landslide, but this was one of the most important uh, areas to hold. And like it gave away the Sinai Peninsula, Israel used to own the Sinai Peninsula as well. It captured it from Egypt, it returned it in order to get peace. And like it did with the Gaza Strip, it returned it to the Palestinian people in order to try to get peace. Same thing here with the Golan Heights, it has tried multiple times to return this to the Syrian government, um, but to no avail, they would not take it back in order to have peace with Israel under any circumstance. As you guys know, if you have any knowledge in the political and social climate of what's going on in Syria, this country is in like a really, really bad state at the moment, and you could actually see that and look at that from right here when you look over the edge you could actually see where Israel ends and Syria begins how everything in Israel is very green and flourishing and then in, in Syria it's just very dark and dreary and the ground is not fertile and everything is kind of destroyed as well when you stand up here you can hear gunfire you can hear bombs you can uh, sometimes even see missiles and see planes dropping bombs it's, it's really crazy it's a really interesting area to stand in in a land that's relatively peaceful here in Israel and then look over and just see a war-torn country where there's a lot of issues like it's insane how you can legitimately hear Syrian rebel groups just running around firing it's nuts so the town directly in front of me right now is called Al Kunitra uh, New Kunitra and it's a pretty big uh, little Syrian village a little big Syrian village <laughs> And yeah, you can see it very clearly from where you're standing right now. Nowadays, because a lot of the international community still doesn't recognize this as part of Israel's sovereign land, even though Israel has fully implemented Israeli law here, and the citizens here, if they're Druze, if they're Arab, Palestinian, Israeli, enjoy equal rights here in Syria. I meant in the Golan Heights. <laughs> there still is a big controversy on whether Israel can retain this land and keep it. As well, because of that, the UN has actually implemented UN peacekeepers here, and they actually set up a little booth here, and they, they're always here. Every single time I've been here, they're always here. A little intervention, I just struck up a conversation with some of the UN uh, soldiers here. Uh, essentially what it is, is that their countries will deploy them as part of the UN peacekeeping uh, you know, system and they come out here from their different countries. They're actually members of their different armies. So two soldiers that are here from Estonia and France and they basically check across the border, across the buffer zone that was created between Syria and Israel for possible violations on both sides. What's always crazy to me is to be able to walk into these bunkers and like just look around at what these soldiers, you know, had to go through and walk around like, look at this. Like this is deep in there. Like bunkers all over this place. And you can see there where they set up these turrets where they were probably defending positions from all sides. I'm not sure if I mentioned, but this mountain is a dormant volcano, so that's pretty awesome. Really awesome that I even have the availability to be able to come and see something like this. And I highly, highly, highly recommend coming out here. It's called Mount Bental. You can uh, you can easily get here if you have a rental car. It's a pretty easy drive to get to from anywhere, Tel Aviv or Haifa or anywhere you are. Whoa. Here's another look at the bunkers. That's insane. Goes all the way in there, huh? Wow. All right, shall we do a little bit of exploring? I think yes. Let's, uh, let's go see what's down here. Wow, check this out. Whoa, <laughs> that one's closed off. Damn, this is creepy. Imagine shooting like a horror movie in here. All right, I'm gonna head on over back to my car. So I was telling you earlier about the Druze people that live here in uh, the Golan Heights, and I've actually met Ahmad. He has a little booth here where he sells uh, all kinds of foods and stuff from the area, and he's gonna tell you guys a little bit about what it's like to be Druze here and, and his way of life. I am Druze. I have family in Syria, grandmother in Lebanon, my uncle near Haifa Dalit al Carmel, my cousin Oklahoma City. As one family, four country. Druze, one wife, one got one wife. We, now I am retired after 31 years. I am farmer today. I have grape honey, date honey, 
care of honey, cherry honey and tahini. Home made everything, my wife I made everything. I am close, as welcome in Golan Heights. I also almost for, completely forgot to mention something really, really cool about the Golan Heights. I don't know if it's really, really cool or more just like, uh, just a nice little tidbit to know. You can't actually go exploring wherever you want in this, uh, in this part of, uh, Israel because the, when Continue on Route 959 for four kilometers. There's actually a bunch of landmines placed all over the place here. And uh, it's and it's really hard to tell. You can't tell where there's going to be a landmine, where you're just going to step on and it's going to blow up. Because this place was in a constant state of war for forever. So that's a nice little tidbit for you to know. If you're in the Golan Heights, don't just free hike around. You stick to an organized route. Or you might get blown to bits. I'm glad you guys enjoyed this adventure because I know you did. I just wanted to let you know, make sure that you guys turn on that notification button so you get my freaking videos when you're subscribed to this channel because YouTube doesn't like doing that for some reason. Anyways, yeah, hopefully we can go explore the Golan Heights another time again and get in more detail. Your Hebrew word of the day today will be army, which is sava. And I'll see you guys next time. I love you long time. A goodbye, Klatz.